Slade album is a great album. It really is a great album. Uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, Spaceball Ricochet, great track. You know, uh, um, Metal Guru. You know, again, it's like it's a definitive uh, a T Rex album. It's all there to be had. Spaceball Ricochet is 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 definitely one of one of my favourites on the on the album, but it, it's difficult to, to choose because I think with Slider, the, the Slider, I, I like all the, all the tracks. I bought a car, it was overkind, I gave it my mind and it disappeared. I said, what can I do, with all the zoo, all I do is say. When you get an idea, you need to bang out three albums, that I always think, that are pretty much the same for the public, so the public get it. That this was just another one in that stage. Didn't, not, for me, not, not, not their best album, but still very good tracks on it. I mean, it's hard to criticise someone when they're that good. The album that had Bowling Alone on the cover, looking like an Aphrodite Lillian Gish, crossed with Shirley Temple in his born to boogie top hat. God bless him, what an album. That didn't reach number one, but I think that was partly due to the fact that, of course, there, there were the, the fly was cashing in, now it had no longer got Mark. Um, you know, that they, they were trying to, to get as much money out of the success of, of, uh, of T-Rex as they possibly could. And on our pocket money, that meant that we were limited to how many, you know, sort of like, particularly albums, we could afford to buy. So if you've got something and one other company's actively promoting an album, i.e. Slider, the other company that's got old stuff and things like that, they'll just throw it out on the back of it, hoping, picking up the sales, picking up the promotion, and all it does is damage both sales. It's a great album, he should have been completely completely happy with it. I think I think he was in a creative way, but uh, you know, as a commercial success, he saw it as just falling slightly short. Although at the time it, it was slated a little bit in the in the music press, um, I'd definitely say it's it's as is as uh, as good as Electric Warrior. Um, now looking back, of course, I mean there there are songs and, and lyrics um, like the you know sort of like when I'm sad I slide. Um, watch me now, I'm going to slide, which I think shows that, um, that the pressure of being famous was definitely getting to Mark. And I remember June sort of saying that, that they would, by that time they were getting to be prisoners in their own home because of the, the fact that um, you know, so many fans had, had found out where they lived. It seemed to sort of mark that meltdown point when a star just uh, suddenly moves from being the buzzword, everybody's sort of rooting for you, and then suddenly you tip over the edge and you're on the way down. And I think Mark was starting to slide a little bit at that point. So many factors combined, really. Health, uh, emotional problems. You know, the novelty was beginning to wear off, probably for him as well, you know. He needed a rest, he needed a break. It's been a hard year for us, so, but in a couple of years maybe I'll have a hard year for it. How long do you want to do this métier? Long time? Um, doing rock and roll, I'll probably do it for about four or five years more, and I'm, I'm going to start directing a film shortly. So that should be interesting. Going into a whole other thing. Mark wrote that song for Joe Cocker, actually. And if you listen to the version of Children in the Revolution in the movie Born to Boogie, Elton John plays the piano in something of an approximation of a Leon Russell type style. And the sonic of the song in the film is nearer to how it was written.
A lot of people had said the single version wasn't as good as the version that was on the film. Um, it, it was a little bit more kind of rocky. Again, Bolan was leaning towards those psychedelic early years, and it was just a, a very psychedelic song. Children of the Revolution, September 72, number two. And uh, oh, let's hope that Mark accepted it as a number two because often, well, always, if a song went to number two, it didn't exist in his world. I was absolutely gutted that Children of the Revolution didn't get to number one. I mean, I couldn't believe it. I, I just thought Mark was, was going to get to number one forever. Children of the Revolution, uh, uh, um, again, was one of those songs that was held off the top spot by someone like Benny Hill or something. Uh, it would have been number one, I think. Uh. Children of the Revolution, to me, is like the beginning of his third stage. I actually thought it was one of the greatest records he's ever made. I actually thought the sound changed. It really started to change. For me, the production, uh, being a producer, I started to hear the sound change. It was like sort of orchestrated in sort of a rock way, it just was bigger. In the falling rain, I drive a Rolls Royce, cause it's good for my voice, but you want... T-Rex were on the roll, and Mark was on the roll, and um, the roll became a Rolls. I've got a Rolls Royce because it's good for my voice. Mark was a leader, he was an icon, so, you know, people responded to just the very title. That was, that was, became my, my protest song, um, whenever I was sort of angry and, and with anything, then I'd go up and put Children of the Revolution on uh, full blast. Children of the Revolution was actually originally used on a film that Mark Bolan made with Ringo Starr. And again, this was another attempt of his to try and break this American market because the Beatles had been a big band in America. And so he got together with Ringo and said, right, well, let's, let's put together like a little film. And the film was called Born to Boogie. I have a film company with Ringo and we'll, I will be making film. Um, but, um, I think anything where the media is kind of um, an expansion of rock and roll. I mean, there's been a lot of talk about revolutions. The only revolution that's going to happen is if people like myself or, or Mick Jagger or Rod Stewart or whoever try to get into other fields, be it television, be it movies, then we will get a revolution. It's what people tend to fall into when they when they sort of they want to move move their creative sources to another medium when I think they should think very carefully about doing that you know, they, everyone's made that you know very few quadrophenias out there uh, at the time everybody was quite excited about it and was hoping it would be uh, a real documentary about the band and about Mark Bowen who was still a phenomenon that people were discovering and, we're anxious to know more about, but it really didn't tell you a lot about Mark, the actual film. The great thing now, of course, it, it is a record of him performing live. Very enjoyable document of something that went on with all these girls going completely bonkers. I went to see it. I went to see it with my best mate, Dick Norman, on acid. And it was during the afternoon, and it was full of screaming, banshee-like, little wailing, teeny bob girls. And it was like, it was better than being at the gig, except it kept stopping and going into these studio bits, or what were, to me and Dick, hysterically funny comedic bits. The fans just thought it was the best thing since sliced bread. But there were people who had their reservations about it, who thought it was a bit of a waste of time, who thought it was, again, Mark Boland just sort of massaging his ego, trying to make himself out as, as the centre of attention. More people would have gone to see it 
had it been released sort of, you know, the, those sort of six months earlier. But I, I think by the time it, it sort of got, um, got round to sort of all the provincial um, cinemas at the beginning of 73, um, Mark sort of hit total, you know, dominance of, of the of the the singles charts was was starting to wane. Solid Gold Easy Action to me uh, started to get a bit confusing to me. It, st it started to become a little bit cliched. It's sort of like, you know, he was sort of, I sort of think he was sort of struggling a bit. I mean, it was still great. It wasn't Solid Gold Easy Action. It was a good rock and roll record, a good kind of record of that genre, but it was not Telegram Sam, or it wasn't Hot Lover, it wasn't Light a White Swan. Very simple. I mean, just a very, very easy song to uh, to, to dance to. There was uh, nothing to read in between the lines. It wasn't a song that you would that, you, that, they, that, that the lyrics uh, you would you would remember that much. They were just very, very catchy.